Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. You know, this NFL punishment, four-game punishment, for Tom Brady is an absolute joke. Right? I'm embarrassed for the league. If the league is trying its best to look tough, it's doing an awfully poor job. Right? Let me back up a little bit. There's a member of the press who is dead on with this story. It's Keyshawn Johnson. He's one of the few guys in the press who isn't caught up with this cult of Tom Brady's personality. Right? He's one of the few guys saying, wow, this four-game suspension, that's light. Right? That's only one quarter of the regular season. That's light. Right? Keyshawn himself is saying he was expecting a suspension of at least eight games. At least. Let me make the argument on why it should be more than eight games. Why four games is a joke. And keep in mind, the four games is likely to be reduced to two games. Right? What I want to do is just briefly compare and contrast this to the 1919 World Series. You had a Hall of Famer, Shoeless Joe Jackson, caught up in cheating. Right? The other way, trying to throw the game, accepting money from gamblers. And they got suspended for life. Right? Now here... Just imagine, if you're a gambler, how many points it would be worth to you personally to know that a Joe Montana was going to be able to use balls exactly the way he likes them, right? Illegal balls, deflated balls that would allow him to be his best, right? What would that be worth to you? Several points, wouldn't it? I mean, understand, gamblers are obsessed with things like playing conditions, the weather, whether it's windy. Is the wind greater than 10 miles an hour? Now, if you could tell me that an elite quarterback like a Joe Montana would be able to have special balls, illegal balls, that would allow him to get a great grip in icy conditions so that he could actually pass the football at his best in subpar conditions or in playoff conditions. I'm telling you that kind of inside information would be worth a lot of money. Now let's talk about the absurdity of this four game penalty. Are you telling me that if, let's say, Peyton Manning got team personnel members who he was paying with memorabilia, who he was bribing with valuable items, right? If he got these paid personnel members to deflate footballs, so that he could get a competitive advantage in regular season games and in playoff games. And then if Peyton Manning then lied to the press about it, right, shook his head, said, hey, I don't know anything about this, right? And then if the league investigated it, after Peyton Manning wins the Super Bowl at the end of a season in which he has cheated in numerous games with these illegal footballs and got caught in the AFC Championship game, right? If you were to tell me that when the league investigated it, Peyton Manning then refused to turn over his phone. If the league then uncovered text messages talking about the illegal scheme, right, in which the team personnel guys actually mention Peyton Manning, say things like Peyton Manning was upset with the inflation of the footballs, 
right, and has been pressuring us since the Jet game. And if you look up when the Jet games are, and you see that the Patriots played the Jets week seven, right, if Peyton Manning played the Jets week seven, and if the text messages talking about inflation issues with the football are dated October the 16th in the middle of the year, right, middle of the year, let's say Peyton Manning gets busted in the AFC Championship game, but team personnel guys are calling themselves the deflator from the middle of the season. If you told me that all Peyton Manning would get would be a four-game suspension, I would think you're joking. How many teams played against the New England Patriots last year who didn't have the advantages of deflated footballs like the Patriots had? How many? New England's win over Baltimore was so shaky, involved substitution so edgy, that the league has changed the rules on those substitutions. Right? Now, my point to you is, understand there is a distinct possibility. Distinct. Given the fact that the text messages involving the two guys who were, were participating in this deflation scheme go back to mid-October, right? Mid-October. Understand that there is a chance that the Patriots cheated with deflated footballs in that Baltimore game, in several regular season games. Right? Don't confuse the discovery of the cheating, halftime of the AFC Championship game, with the actual length of the cheating, half a season. Right? Let's just use common sense here, because obviously no one cooperated fully with Ted Wells. Right? If the personnel guys are talking about deflating the footballs in mid-October, and then if the Colts tip off the league to the fact that it's widely known around the league that the Patriots are doing something to the footballs, then if the league actually investigates it during the AFC Championship game and discovers that in that game there's chicanery with the footballs, then shouldn't our operating assumption be that from the date of the text involving Patriot personnel guys talking about deflating footballs, October 16th, 2014, until when the Patriots were busted in the AFC Championship game, the last game of the playoffs in the AFC before the Super Bowl, that the Patriots were engaged in a pattern of cheating that Tom Brady knew about. Now let's talk about the wording of the Wells report. Right? Let me just say this, full disclosure. I'm an attorney. I've been practicing law since 1989. Understand you read legal documents and there are certain terms of art. Right? Ted Wells has to be very careful in his firm's use of language. Right? Because he wants to be as accurate as possible. There's the risk that he'll be involved in later legal action. As it is, we're hearing Tom Brady and his agent right, are talking about appealing this. Make no mistake, Ted Wells has Tom Brady busted dead to right. Right. Just use your own common sense. 
Why else would New England Patriot personnel guys be talking about how Brady is upset with the inflation of the football in mid-October? Why else would Tom Brady lie, not just to you, the general public, but to Ted Wells in claiming that he didn't know these guys? You know what? These are the guys he's giving memorabilia to. Think about it. Tom Brady's lying for a reason. When the Patriots were busted with deflated footballs, he knew the balls were deflated. Listen to former quarterbacks. Listen to Mark Brunel. Right? Go back and research Joe Montana's statements right after Deflate Gate broke. The quarterback knows when the balls are deflated. Brady's a pro quarterback, right? The bottom line is Tom Brady's busted here. He's busted. The report contains legal terms of art, right? It's more likely than not that Tom Brady had a general knowledge of what was going on. I'm sure if Ted Wells is asked bluntly, do you think he knew Ted Wells would say, of course he did. Right? They have text messaging. They have the guys who were involved in actually deflating the footballs talking about Brady's complaints about the football. Right? We have a photo of the football. It's, it's the football Brady used when he cracked the 50,000 yard mark that he signed for these guys. We know Brady gave these guys valuable things. We know that. We know Brady started calling these guys a lot right after the flake gate broke. You're telling me when Brady placed these phone calls he didn't know who he was calling? Do you believe that? Don't you think there's a reason Brady lied to you? Don't you think there's a reason Brady didn't turn over his phone to the investigator? So let's be clear here. We need to be clear here. The New England Patriots just won a Super Bowl. Just won a Super Bowl. Understand, the Patriots played the Jets last year for the first time on October the 16th 2014 understand the first text messages in which one guy says to the other Tom is acting crazy about balls right another guy says he's saying they're not good enough they're literally talking about it the very day of the jet game so, understand you have more than half a season from week 8 through week 17. And you have one and a half playoff games in which the Patriots may have been tampering with the footballs illegally. Folks, that's not a four-game suspension. That really should have been a season-long suspension. You know that the precedent being set right now is really based on who Tom Brady is. Because if you look at it in the abstract, this is the kind of thing where a guy should be suspended for a year. Right? I'm telling you if a rookie like Jameis Winston, a guy without an NFL reputation, we're to have engaged in a scheme where he's paying team employees to give him illegal footballs. Right? And let's be clear, the footballs are illegal. They don't comply with league protocol. If he's paying guys to tamper with footballs after the league has vetted the football, that's how bad it is. Right? And if this goes on for more than half a season, and Jameis Winston's team, because in part of this advantage, gets the home field advantage throughout the playoffs, then wins a playoff game, then gets busted with deflated footballs, 
at halftime of the championship game for the conference. Would you feel comfortable if the league then came down and the penalty was just a four-game suspension? If the answer is no, then quite frankly, Tom Brady is getting one of the best deals I have ever heard of. Right? This infraction is outrageous. If you care about the credibility of the league, then Tom Brady should have been suspended really for a season. Right? The fact that he should be suspended at least eight games, that's a given. Right? Understand the arguments you're hearing in Brady's defense are weak. His agent, Don Yee, is calling this a witch hunt and all this other stuff. Understand, either Brady cheated or he didn't. The evidence that he cheated is overwhelming. Right? He's been busted publicly lying about the issue. He claimed he didn't even know these guys who he's calling on the phone. We know a locker room attendant is not going to unilaterally decide to deflate the footballs after the league has inspected them. What do you think Tom Brady hoped to accomplish by telling these guys, hey, I don't like the inflation of the footballs? Aren't you concerned that the text messages took place in the middle of the season? Let's be clear. The Patriots are busted January 18th. Right? They had the first half of January. All of December. All of November. The October 26th game in October. To play games with the football. Now, you might root for a team, right? You might have a team that you wanted to get in the playoffs. Their chances of getting in the playoffs may have been negatively impacted by a game they played against the Patriots in which the Patriots had this unfair advantage. Let me list the teams who the Patriots played after the text messages where the New England employees are talking about Tom Brady being upset with the inflation levels of the football. Right? On October 26, the Patriots played the Chicago Bears. The next week, they played the Denver Broncos. Understand, they beat out the Denver Broncos for the best record in the AFC. November 16th, after a bye week, they played the Indianapolis Colts, the team that ultimately contacted the league to complain about the inflation of footballs. The week after that, they played the Detroit Lions. Lion fans, watching this video, wouldn't you have liked to have had a higher seed in the playoffs? Did you really want to play Dallas in Dallas? Wouldn't you have rather have played that playoff game at home? The next week, they played the Green Bay Packers. The following week, they played the San Diego Chargers. Right? Then they played the Dolphins, the Jets, the Bills. Folks, if you don't think that Tom Brady's use of illegal footballs didn't have an impact on playoff seating in both conferences, then you simply haven't been paying attention. November 23rd of last year, as I said, they played the Detroit Lions. Right? December 7th, they played the San Diego Chargers. November 2nd, they played the Denver Broncos. All of these teams were concerned with making the playoffs and playoff seeding. 
It's during this tough part of their schedule that this deflation scheme was going on. Right? So I'm sorry. In fact, I'm not sorry. This is a joke. Right? If Tom Brady's name was Geno Smith, and if he complained to New York Jet personnel about the inflation levels of footballs, then started giving them memorabilia, right, as payment for their deflation of the footballs after the NFL inspected the footballs before games. And if Geno Smith was playing against teams like the Denver Broncos, the Indianapolis Colts, the Detroit Lions, the Green Bay Packers, right, high-profile games, then went through a playoff game against the Baltimore Ravens. That was a close game. That game ended four-point margin of victory for the Patriots. Four points, right, within a touchdown. And then we were to find out in the AFC Championship game that Geno Smith was using deflated footballs in that game. He's not getting a four-game suspension. Hell, I don't even think he's getting an eight-game suspension. Right? Josh Gordon, folks, he's out next year. He's out. He hasn't injured the game. He hasn't fooled around with the seeding like this scheme has. Right? Every gambler knows that if a quarterback is able to use their dream balls, that's worth a lot of points on the betting spread. Right? Especially when the other quarterback isn't being given that luxury. This is an outrage. Keyshawn Johnson is right. Let's hope the league is consistent. So, if Geno Smith goes on to win a Super Bowl in a clearly tainted season, where he's gotten use of footballs nobody else in the league has gotten for more than half the season, including the first playoff game and the first half of the conference championship game, a tainted season in which Geno Smith, while cutting corners, is able to get his team the top seed in the conference after beating teams fighting for seeding like the Detroit Lions, right? Like the Green Bay Packers who had to play the NFC Championship game on the road in Seattle, a game they barely lost. Let's hope that your comfortable sports fan, NFL fan, when after all of that, Geno Smith gets a slap on the wrist, a meager four-game suspension. I'm guessing at that point, you won't give a damn, you won't care in the slightest what Geno Smith's agent has to say. Because you'll know the punishment's a joke. The agent's just a puppet. The whole thing is a sham, a disgrace. A black eye on the league. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I understand there are many people outraged that he's getting suspended at all. What planet are you people from? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.